Einen wunderschönen guten Morgen. Mein Name ist Thomas Breitinger. Ich bin der Büroleiter von Maya Vidono in Deutschland. Wir sind bekannt als Dienstleister für Indien, aber seit unserer Fusion mit Altios International sind wir weltweit der führende Dienstleister für Internationalisierung, also in unserer kleinen Nische und bieten unsere Leistungen nun in 23 Ländern weltweit an, mit jeweils eigenen Gesellschaften vor Ort und so auch in Australien und Neuseeland. Zu unserem Event heute haben wir 70 Teilnehmer. Schön, dass ihr alle da seid. Vorab noch kurz was Organisatorisches. Also sie sind alle stumm geschaltet und haben aber die Möglichkeit, Fragen zu stellen, indem sie die in die Chatbox rechts außen schreiben. Die finden Sie in dem Bedienfeld. Ähm, falls Sie eher individuelle Fragen haben, die Sie jetzt nicht im Rahmen dieses Webinars besprechen möchten, dann schreiben Sie mir bitte jederzeit eine E-Mail. Also wir freuen uns darauf, Ihre Fragen zu beantworten. Das Webinar, das wird außerdem auch noch aufgezeichnet und auf Wunsch können wir Ihnen die Aufzeichnung im Nachgang zukommen lassen. Und das Gleiche gilt selbstverständlich auch für die Präsentation. Melden Sie sich einfach und wir lassen Sie Ihnen gerne zukommen. So, I switch now to English and my colleagues in Australia and New Zealand will introduce themselves. Dear colleagues, the stage is all yours. Good morning, Germany. We're coming from, uh, from Sydney. I would like to introduce ourselves very quickly. Uh, as you can see, I'm the thorn between the roses. On my left, you have uh, Lucy. Lucy Autreau is the head of advisory of the ITOS team. We're all based in Sydney. On my right, you have, uh, if you can see, you have uh, Roman. Roman is a product manager working with, uh, working with Lucy. And uh, we have Lorraine. Lorraine who is based in uh, Auckland, New Zealand. And she's the business developer, developer over there. So, guten Tag. Danke für Ihre Partizipation uh, heute. I will continue in English for the sake of my colleagues uh, and also because uh, I specialize Deutsch. Um, Deutsch. I am pleased to meet you. As Maxime mentioned, uh, I am Roman. I am a project manager for Altus Australia. And uh, today I, I will aim to share a bit of knowledge that I have acquired through Altus 30 years of experience in being the partner and success of small to mid cap companies here in Australia. So the Australian country profile. Although COVID made its entry and impact onto the Australian market in 2020, research laid out that solid foundation and resilient country response to the pandemic positioned Australia as a friendly ground for global business and trade, as you can see. Ranked as the world's largest economies in 2021 with a GDP of 1.3 trillion, um, Australia has witnessed an increasing growth over the past two decades with an excellent living quality, healthcare and political uh, stable environment. The life expectancy of people in Australia ranges from 84 years old to 80 years old for males. As part of the Commonwealth um, country, Australia is considered as a federal constitutional monarchy established by the Commonwealth of Australia of a total of six states and two self-governing governing territories. So whilst the economy has been thriving on diversified industry, as you can see, the promising sectors uh, range from food and beverage, uh, mining, um, new sectors such as IT technology increased during COVID during the, week, the year of 2020, forming 15% of the total economic production. So Australia is ranked as, uh, by the World Bank, actually, as one of the leading countries in ease of doing business alongside countries like the UK or Germany or Singapore. Australia has overall favorable trade policies and regulations to global investments. These can vary from uh, cost advantages in creating subsidiaries, trade agreements with vast numbers of countries and an overall long history of democratic policies and mindsets which pushes law and regulatory frameworks so this is one of the reasons 
um, it is in really good terms with many leading uh, economy, as you can see in the export and import uh, NFDI tables, um, such as Germany, the US, China, and uh, as you can see, Germany is, is uh, ranked as the fifth import uh, country here in Australia. In terms of exports, China is still the first market, but a lot of countries with COVID are looking at other opportunities, such as the States or India. Actually, recently, uh, the government has passed a few policies about doing trade with the United States. So how to do business um, in Australia? So in Australia, like every country, you have a few cultural differences. Uh, people in Australia are quite straightforward. They are quite open to new practical ideas from the first meeting, but require in-person follow-up and appreciate trustworthy relationships uh, built on long-term partnerships. Hence the importance of having someone on ground to develop their business. So Australia is presenting a mix between Western and Asian population. It has quite a big Asian community. Therefore, the country often stands as an opportunistic ground to enter Asia for Western businesses and vice versa. In terms of don'ts, uh, Australians are quite pragmatic when it comes to business. They like a bit of a friendly chat to also build trust engaging themselves into a partnership. Often, uh, overselling doesn't really work. Another one would be um, a few difficulties encountered by our clients uh, through the years would have been having a physical presence in Australia through different time zones and um, barriers like as such. Having a legal entity here requires a few uh, mandatory points, such as having a local director on ground that is uh, an Australian citizen. So this is why Altios uh, has found an opportunity uh, and built his value proposition around that, as we were really able to support our clients, offering both a local uh, director, uh, all the corporate support they needed, and a part-time business development to leverage our long-term uh, 30 years ecosystem. So the promising industries in Australia, as you can see, uh, there are several depending on the states. So Northern Territory is mainly mining, manufacturing, Western Australia, similar mining and construction, South Australia manufacturing, healthcare and social assistance. Victoria is a bit more um, of a creative and innovative uh, with the city of Melbourne. So you have a predominant education training, manufacturing, financial insurance services. Sydney is the financial capital uh, of um, Australia. So you have predominant financial insurance services, manufacturing, education and training. Tasmania is a bit more uh, lean towards agriculture, healthcare and social assistance. And Queensland is mainly mining construction, but also uh, agriculture. So if you look at this, this map, uh, you can see that uh, mining is a recurring industry. It is one of the biggest industry in Australia, especially uh, including the, the METs. So the METs uh, are mining equipment, technology and services, um, uh, infrastructure, education, agriculture and financial service are also the predominant industry. Import opportunities will often uh, lie in industry like engineering equipments for mining, creative industry, digital and innovation uh, products um, in the industry I've just mentioned. So now I will uh, give the mic to my colleague Lauren, who will give you uh, an overview of New Zealand. Thank you, Roman. Hi, everyone. So I'm Lorraine Schluter. Uh, I'm the business development manager for Alshus. I'm based in Auckland right now. And uh, as Maxi mentioned, I help clients to look at New Zealand as an opportunity, but also New Zealanders to access to international uh, markets through our network. So just to give you a little bit of insight um, about New Zealand. So um, New Zealand has a GDP of 196 billion US dollars, which is about 164 billion euros. 
And it actually has a quite large um, GDP for its small population of 5 million inhabitants. Um, the country has one of the most globalized economies. Uh, it depends really uh, on international trade and on exports. And actually, um, exports account for about 30% of total GDP. Um, there's a lot of small businesses too in New Zealand. So small businesses represent 97% of uh, all the businesses in New Zealand, which is huge. And those small businesses employ 30% uh, of the population and they produce around also 30% of GDP. Um, as we could see, uh, the three main partners, trade partners, are China, Australia, and the US for both import and exports. However, Germany is one of, um, a key, is a very like, a big trading partner for New Zealand. Um, it represents uh, 4 billion euros um, in the two ways, so um, goods and services trade. And um, Germany is the largest uh, EU trading partner. Um, so they export uh, mainly to New Zealand a lot of uh, transport um, services, a lot of uh, motor vehicles, mechanical machinery and equipment, uh, pharmaceutical products also. Um, and also, if we talk about exports, um, New Zealand exports a lot of meat to Germany, and especially venison and uh, sheep, but also uh, they export a lot of wine and fruits. So, um, there's a, as we could see on the left side, there's um, quite a large time difference. Right now we have, New Zealand is 10 hours ahead of you, of uh, Germany. Uh, so that's uh, important to keep in mind. In terms of doing business, so uh, if we go to the next slide, um, we see that there's a lot of do's and don'ts in New Zealand. So it could be similar to Australia, uh, but you need to be aware that uh, New Zealand is not the same country as Australia, and a lot of people sometimes confuse those two countries. Um, however, so you need to be prepared before going to New Zealand. You need to know how to prepare your meetings, um, like, and what happens during the meetings. So during the meetings, um, you need to give references. Uh, you need to emphasize with a win-win scenario, and uh, you need to like give an impression that everything is well managed and under control. Um, however, it's important that before the meeting, you break the ice. There's quite a laid-back uh, lifestyle in New Zealand. It's um, important to maybe make some jokes. Um, and yeah, also, um, after the meeting, it's important you keep in touch, you follow up face-to-face. -face. Um, you need to be patient, too, uh, because it could be quite a slow process uh, with uh, in New Zealand. Um, so yeah, the hierarchy is often consulted afterwards. So you just need to be patient and then also be respectful of um, like the Maori people here in New Zealand. Um, the benefits of doing business in New Zealand is that in New Zealand is number one uh, uh, for ease of doing business. Um, it's also number one for starting a new business. So it's quite straightforward to open a subsidiary in New Zealand. However, you need to know how to do so. You need to know your ecosystem. And um, there's, it's also a good uh, opportunity to uh, then afterwards export to Asian markets because there's a, a very close uh, proximity. In terms of don'ts, so as I mentioned before, um, don'ts uh, confuse New Zealand and Australia. Um, also, um, there's like, I wanted to mention that uh, you shouldn't get a bad reputation because it's quite a small country, so everyone knows each other. Um, so it's important that you start uh, and you have a positive um, like uh, feedback. Um, also, uh, you shouldn't make any comments that uh, would give the impression that you're superior to them. Because as I said, there's a lot of small businesses and everyone knows each other. Uh, there's a very good environment there. Uh, the difficulties, I would say, of doing maybe business in New Zealand is that um, to open a subsidiary, you need to have a local director. And the local director um, needs to be needs to have the nationality, needs to be from New Zealand, or uh, he needs to be Australian and have an entity in Australia. So um, having a subsidiary in New Zealand is very important to just uh, meet people, to be 
part of the ecosystem. Uh, each state also has its own uh, business partner. So if you know someone in Auckland, doesn't mean you're gonna, it's gonna be easy to do business in Wellington or in Nelson or in other regions. Uh, also be aware that the population is very um, spread, is not very spread out actually. Um, most of the population is busy in Auckland. Auckland has um, about 40% of the full population and um, it's quite intense so be, be aware of that. If we go to the, the next slide um, we could see that uh, New Zealand is uh, divided into 16 different regions and uh, it's for like local government purposes. However, each region has its specificity and each region has a, a promising industry. Um, so, for example, uh, Auckland, uh, I'm based in Auckland. Auckland is very like um, specialized in food processing, food and beverage, and uh, we call it the food processing powerhouse. Um, there's also like high um, value manufacturing um, industries there. It's like a real hub for manufacturing. So um, there's also a lot of smart uh, research and skills that have uh, given Auckland um, a real recognition for its high value um, manufacturing industry. Um, there's also, uh, for example, if we go to Wellington, Wellington is known for the big screening industry, all the films, also the Digitech industry, but also business process operations. Uh, if we go to Hawke's Bay on the other side, it's more specialized in horticulture, uh, in the wine industry, there's so many different vineyards, uh, food sector, manufacturing also. White cattle on the other side is more specialized for logistics, for manufacturing and dairy industry too. Um, if we go down south, we have Otago and Otago is uh, a huge destination for tourism. There's all the ski resorts there, but also agriculture, so many um, like different companies for, that are um, like exporting fruits and vegetables. Um, there's also high value manufacturing uh, down there in, in Otago. So yeah, it's good you know your different uh, regions and that each different uh, region has uh, its own partners. Okay, the more the, uh, the economic part, uh, free trade agreements. Australia is um, a small market in itself, it's only 25 million people, but you have to keep in mind there's a strong spending power in this country, the strong economy, uh, salaries are high, and uh, uh, the, the, uh, the economy is, TV. even now, it's still quite, quite violent. But it's also a getaway to Asia, and sometimes Australia is considered a test market. There's a strong Asian community here growing and uh, uh, often European company treat Australia as, as, a, as a test market to after sell to big countries like Indonesia, China, India, etc. Uh, Australia and Germany have uh, been linked with partnership for, for a long time. Uh, don't forget there is nearly one million uh, people of German origin or German in Australia, which is a lot, it's nearly 4% of the population. And or historically they got established, uh, especially in uh, Barossa Valley uh, in South Australia, you know, wine industry, but also all kind of industry. Uh, so there is a direct relationship between Australia and Germany. And now Australia is reinforcing its link uh, with uh, Europe in, in general, of course, for historically uh, with UK, of course, but also with Europe. There is, as you know, a problem at the moment between Australia and China, which hopefully will be resolved soon and there is a bit of a trade war for political reason. And uh, for that reason, a lot of companies have been, uh, they maybe put all the eggs in the same basket in China for a long time, and now they have to source all the markets in Europe, in America, and everywhere else, because some, uh, not everywhere, but some industries have been heavily penalized against the wine, barley, meat, wood, coal, uh, cannot go to China at the moment. And it's a huge market loss for these companies. So. They actively now look for other markets and other sources of, uh, of uh, outcome. Um, historically, again, it's very normal. Uh, Germany have been trading uh, motor vehicles, cars, medicine, pharmaceutical products, 
machinery, like tool machines to Australia and New Zealand, um, because that's really the, 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 one of the strengths of your economy. And in return, Australia and New Zealand have been trading more product from the primary sector, food and beverage, processed food and beverage, uh, mining products, products from the extraction. And that's also a, a huge part of the uh, Australian economy. And for that, even though, yes, New Zealand is a bit different from Australia, but a component of the economy are not that different in, uh, in uh, the, the, the strengths of the production. So there will be, if anything, there will be more and more relationship and uh, agreements between Europe and Australia and with uh, Germany as, again, the second partner in uh, Europe after the UK. This may change and Germany could become the first partner in the years to come. So the COVID situation, of course, it's uh, everybody's interest. But we have to, you probably know that uh, Australia has been, and New Zealand even less, have been very, uh, hasn't been very affected by COVID compared to Europe, compared to America. Uh, we have less, since the beginning, we have less than 1,000 people dead, which is of course a big number. But again, compared to what's happening in the rest of the world, it's nearly neglectable. I think the country took measures very quickly um, and very good measures. Again, it's a big country. It's a less urbanized population than, uh, than Europe or America, and the results are there. So we don't, we don't wear masks. Uh, we're not confined. We never, we never knew confinement, except a little bit in Melbourne for a while. Uh, another vaccine and being administrated to uh, a big part of the population. And we like to think, but wishful thinking, that by the end of the year, we'll be able to travel overseas again. Domestically, we can travel wherever we want. Uh, and very soon, in the next few days, the, what we call the corridor between Australia and New Zealand will be reopened. I mean, we can travel there and they can travel here. It's a small start, but it's a, it's a start and it will be very welcome to the population. Uh, so the economy has slowed down, of course, last year, but I can see now it's back to normal. The retail trade is back to normal. Restaurants and cafes and everything are open. They've never been closed. Uh, so again, we are much less affected than the rest of the world. So don't uh, be afraid to come here. Well, there is still a two weeks quarantine, of course. Um, but again, we would we'll like to think by October, November, this will soon be over. So road to success. In other words, how can you uh, reach this market? It's uh, it's a cliche, but it's important to remember that it's far away. For you, it's far away. For us, you are far away. At the moment, it's eight hours difference. Uh, in the worst of case, it's 10 hours. Uh, New Zealand is uh, two hours more, which means it, it's very hard to handle the market from uh, Europe to Australia and vice versa. It's not very hard, it's impossible uh, because of this single time uh, difference. So we have uh, five different steps of uh, reaching this market that we like to analyze one by one by order of importance. The first one is implementation mission. It's, it's very basic. It's a market study. It's not very basic in study, but uh, the bottom line is to say, is there a market for my product or my service or not? Of course, that's something we can we can do. Uh, give you a good mapping of uh, the situation. What is the competition? What is the uh, the, the, the the pricing, etc. It's, it's just a market study, and it's a step number one, which doesn't uh, which is one question. Yes, there is a market for my um, for my uh, product. And again. Uh, most of the companies we're talking to uh, tonight have uh, some kind of relationship with Australia. So if you're interested in this country, you probably know that there is a, a market here for your products. Distribution agreement, that's a step after, is identifying a partner. Uh, it could be a distributor, it could be a, a retail network, it could be an importer, uh, and there is a contract being signed. Again, that's the step number one. It's essential, of course, to find somebody trustworthy. We help you to find and identify this person. It's always complicated. Uh, after that, it doesn't solve the problem of you're far away or they're far away, and it's hard to keep any kind of control on a distributor far away. Uh, only for the, the, the payment problem, the logistic problem, the possible problem, of course, of logistics, of importing, of payment, of just doing the good job. So, of course, it's important to identify this particular person but we all know it doesn't solve everything. The 
Step number three is something we strongly uh, advocate for. It's uh, one of the best solutions. It's what we call in Germany incubation. Um, we call it here portage. It's the fact of having somebody working with us uh, in our payroll and by working for you. So it's like having um, an envoy from your company. Uh, certain time of the month, it could be two days, it could be one week, it could be two, three weeks, it could be the whole month according of your activity and the, 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 the level of importance of your activity here. And we handle this person even physically in our office. We take care of uh, his uh, pay slip. We take care of his uh, local expenses. Uh, and it's a much better way to have somebody on top of your distributor or distributors. Uh, we can do the job exclusively uh, for you. And again, we feel it's a temporary solution, but it's a very good one when you have a business here to, to handle. Because again, this person will be here all day to handle your business. The solution number four, which again is the next step, is the one we strongly encourage is to uh, open a subsidiary. Open a subsidiary, it's always a bit scary for small companies. Uh, it's a lot simpler than Europe. Now, I won't go into details, and of course, we're very happy to give you these details after that. But uh, setting up a subsidiary here, of course, that's something we do on a sort of a daily basis. Uh, you're at home. It's your uh, it, it, it's your home. It allows you to do to do a lot of things. It's a lot simpler in terms of administration. Uh, you need to open bank accounts. You need to do all the administrative administrative work. We do that for you. We take care of all the back office, and then your home. Uh, what does it mean uh, concretely? It's you're able to if you import product, we're able to claim GST. GST is good and service tax, so it's like VAT. Uh, you can claim this GST when you import products. It allows you to recruit uh, locally. Also, it helps you, and that's very important, especially uh, recently, to get grants and subsidies from government. Uh, the local government has been very generous, I would say, with companies of, uh, affected by COVID, and uh, and they gave um, things like job keepers, job seekers. Job keepers is they have they they paying for your staff. A certain amount, a certain percentage of it, uh, while not being employed sometimes, working from home. And that was a lot of oxygen for a lot of companies, otherwise they wouldn't have survived. So all this you can you can have access to that if you have a local company. If you are in the manufacturing or industry business uh, and you need to tender to either on a federal level or on a state level, you need to have a local company. They will never tender with a company overseas, never. Uh, and it's true for a lot of countries. So all these are very good reason to have a, a legal entity in, in Australia. Uh, there's a few, the, so the only constraint to have a local um, director, and that's something we provide. Usually it's one of us, you need to have an Australian passport, it's one of us in, in the company. So we provide a sort of a la carte um, service to um, companies overseas to register very quickly uh, a local company which again is a lot simpler and a lot less expensive than an organization in Europe or even America. And finally, it's uh, sub uh, finally external growth. And that's a service at Altios we are uh, very inclined to, to develop. Uh, that's, we think it's the future and already it's, it's, it's the present. External growth is what you call M&A, which is buying a company. Again, it's a bit scary for, for small and medium companies. But um, there's a lot of uh, companies in there that they require capital. They've suffered with the COVID and suffered with uh, um, a lot of different uh, factors, unfortunately. And buying a, a company could be simpler than, um, than, than, than you think. Our job, and we're doing at the moment, is to identify uh, companies to be purchased, which correspond to your KPI and do all the work of approaching them, negotiating with them on your behalf up to the due diligence. And I will give you an example after of uh, the kind of work we can do we can do from here. Of course it's more um, it's more expensive, it takes more time, but it's so also a very good way to to save a lot of time. You save a few years because you're buying a structure, you're buying resources, uh, you're buying a network. And that's something you don't have to do if you start from, uh, from scratch. So the other part of uh, 
this presentation is what we call a case study. So we'll give you a few examples very openly of uh, cases we're working on to give you uh, so, some examples. It's important for you to you can relate. Auckland Unlimited is, um, of course, a New Zealand uh, body. Uh, it's an uh, agency, um, the Auckland Council, in fact, who is looking for companies in Australia to invest in New Zealand. That's the mission. And they ask, uh, they ask Altios to identify this. So it's a big task to look for construction infrastructure companies that are interested and have an experience in Auckland are interested to invest. And we're talking about uh, dozens of billions of dollars. And that's uh, infrastructure, it's tunnels, roads, water, shopping centers, hospital, etc. Why Australia? Because they want to find sources overseas. And Australia is like the, 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 we say the big brother of, uh, of, of New Zealand. Uh, so they share the same culture. It makes a lot of sense to turn to, to Australia. But um, they, they want to find uh, this, this type of uh, companies who have experience and uh, are willing to uh, invest on the long term to Auckland. Auckland will become a, a very large city in the next few years, but they have a, like a lot of places. They have a strong need of infrastructure to be, to be established. So our mission is to contact uh, or identify companies, there's a lot, um, talking to them and convince them to um, invest in, uh, in New Zealand. So it's a very interesting and of course a long-term mission. Another example, which is a totally different softbox. Softbox is a, uh, that, could be, that could relate to a lot of German companies. It's a very sophisticated product. Uh, which produce um, a temperature control packaging system, uh, basically to ship uh, like serums, blood, uh, things which are um, chemicals, vaccines, etc. So at the moment you can see that, of course, the, the impact of this kind of uh, product. It's a UK company, uh, they've uh, they identified Australia as a strong market, not just Australia, but there's also China and a few others. And they asked us first to uh, make a market study that, that we did. And, and after that, to uh, contact uh, companies that could be interested in this, um, in this particular product, which again is very niche and a little competition. So that was done during COVID and that was still successful. We could uh, interview and uh, interest uh, a lot of companies through, through, uh, through video. Uh, a lot of them were interested because again, it's uh, this, this kind of product is very hard to find and we identified um, potential clients. So we figure out that again, the best way for, well, they figure out, we convince them that the best way for Softbox to be present here and be efficient was to uh, have a part-time representation. And that's something we, we have at the moment in our team. So all these uh, companies are being contacted and we're starting trading uh, between some box and the, the client through us. And because business come back to normal, we have this person on a part-time basis who have attended a trade show. That was one of the first we have. And uh, we feel there's a tremendous potential, not just potential, tremendous development for some box in Australia in, uh, in the years to come. And we're happy to be instrumental to the success. That's another company, a French one this time, um, specialized in uh, pharmaceutical specialty. Um, and we have uh, something we've, we organize incubation. We have somebody full time uh, taking care of, of uh, contacting clients. And uh, well, as you can see, of course, the health. Uh, uh, and a lot of German companies involved in the health business is uh, very important and will only grow. Fortunately or unfortunately, uh, this is a growing sector in this, not just in Australia, but, uh, but everywhere. We know is a historical client of, uh, of France, of course, uh, the bread. Uh, we can't escape the bread in France. Uh, we have them. Uh, as incubator, 
for the last few years. I mean, they have an office in, in our office. They don't have a subsidiary yet, but that's the way they work uh, for the last few years, and they're very really happy with us. We have them in uh, different countries, in China, in New Zealand, um, and uh, that's growing business in um, in in a, in, in a bread sector. Okay, Metal Seven is a very interesting case and that we have for a year and a half uh, and we had, we'd say we, 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 we work with them all the way we started with a, um, a market study to make sure they have uh, so metal 7 is a quebecois it's a canadian company in uh, close to montreal and they specialize in i would say all kind of equipment for the mining australia is the biggest mining market in the world uh, and uh, mining is one thing, but the mining equipment uh, come from all over the world, uh, Canada, probably Germany, uh, America, etc. So Canada and um, Australia share a lot of values, historically, um, culturally, etc. So they feel very comfortable to do business in, um, in Australia. So first they secured a uh, market city showing that there is potential for the, for the there is a room for the, the products. They did that with us. Uh, as a second step, they opened a subsidiary with us. We run the subsidiary. And um, finally, way more important, they wanted external growth. They wanted to buy a company just to speed up the implementation in, in Australia. And we've been asked to identify partners for them uh, nearly, uh, nearly a year ago. There was a change of management with them. There was a change of, uh, of, of vision about what they wanted to acquire. And we're glad to say that very close to, um, to close the deal with them, we identified a company in South Australia. That is not exactly what they do, but uh, on the contrary, it increased the, the synergy with other activities linked to the mining as well. And um, no. uh, we uh, again we're very close to 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 uh, to finalize the uh, the purchase of of this company. It's um, it's much heavier work, of course, to, to find the right company, then after the due diligence, to agree on the price, uh, and after that there is a, uh, the, the, the management side of it. Uh, it's very interesting, and that's probably something that will grow with, uh, with that just want to develop this activity. Again, there are very few companies able to do this kind of uh, transaction for small and medium companies, for the very big one, yes but we can have a very uh, sort of human approach to link to companies which have everything to offer to, to each other. That's the end of our presentation. So we, uh, we're happy to hear your questions and we'll be even happier to answer them. If you have any um, questions about... Uh, yes. Sir. The, uh, the Australian or New Zealand market, we're here for that. Again, we have more than 30 years of experience. We're not us directly here. I was born, maybe these ladies were not. Uh, but uh, again, we have a wealth of experience um, all over the world. In Austria, you have to know Altios started in Australia. The father of uh, Altios started here, a Frenchman who is now moved to Singapore. So uh, it's uh, Altios Australia saw the growth of this company. Of, uh, so. Thank you, thank you, everybody. Uh, there are some questions uh, uh, here in the chat, and I start just with the with the first one. It's uh, um, it's about the Commonwealth Games, the Commonwealth Games in July 2022, and um, the question is how important that is economically uh, for the country, and if let's say uh, a German corporate start sponsoring if this would be well uh, uh how, how to say that um if this will be well considered in the in the, in the country if this has been done that would be the first question i don't know who, who want, wants to reply we know by then if we would have a queen or a king never know <laughs> but uh, uh i don't want to go into this debate of uh republic etc i still very um I think as long as the Queen is alive and then the, the, the country is still very, very much attached to Commonwealth and the Crown and everything after things may change. So yes, they're very important, uh, very important game, especially um, after so many um, 
sports tournaments and events are being cancelled. Uh, it's always I remember here when last time there was quite a bit, it's quite a bit thing, yes. It is. Mm -mm -mm. So, um, the the next question is uh, regarding this uh, COVID restrictions. Um, so, uh, um, well, this client they they were not uh, so much uh, able to travel and didn't see the distributor in uh, New Zealand for quite some time. And yeah, because of the time difference, there are difficulties. Let's say in uh, keeping the connection uh, and um, the question would be how how you could support in that if, oh, if possible. That, that's music to our ears. Then we ask us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but no, um, of course, but it's uh, yeah, a lot of companies are, are of course are affected by that. They just can't travel, and it's uh, the, with the time difference. It's uh, it's we, even New, with New Zealand, it's even worse. It's, it's very difficult. So that's why we have a few companies approaching and they say, can you do the, the job for us through this uh, part-time representation or, or whatever, where uh, Lauren is in, uh, is in Oakland, we're here in Sydney, and um, they don't have much of a choice. They have to deal with somebody. Mm -hmm. So yes, we can, we can offer to, to assist them yeah, yeah. one way or another. And how does it work? Basically, it's um, one of our staff. So in that case, um, uh, Loreen or us and Australia, depending where you want to uh, follow up uh, with your distributors or even go to trade shows because now trade shows are coming back um, in Australia. So we have done that in the past. You know, we, we organize um, someone from my team to represent your company and part time re representation is really about us being the correspondent on ground of your business and doing this business development, finding uh, uh, new leads but also following up with your current uh, ecosystem in order to really show that you have a presence and maybe take it to the next step one day of establishing a subsidiary if you don't have one already. Mm -hmm. the, so the, that, that goes into the direction of also the next question that is regarding um, the, the, the part-time model uh, which was uh, described. So this this part-time model uh, can be used for, um, let's say, mainly then pre-sales, no? uh, 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 business development, cold, cold acquisition, however you call it. Um, and there, um, what would be the, the minimum duration of, of such a of such an engagement? Yeah. We, we provide a service a la carte. Every client is different. Every company is different. Every requirement is different. So it could be somebody from a team doing that. It could be somebody we employ because they need some special skill, I mean, some some uh, some very technical uh, uh, skills we, we may not have. Then we hire someone with the company, and this person can be trained, and it could be supervising a distributor or finding distributor or or somebody supervising the the, the money flows. Could be anything. And each mission is different. But the point is, we will uh, we'll do according to what the what the company wants. Even training can be organized. So it is not one solution for all, but we will adapt to whatever the, the company wants. Exactly. And what we um, what we do though is that we have a minimum of uh, four months um, of, of doing part time representation and a certain amount of hours per month. But we do find that um, having and I've and I've done it for experience um, having you know at least two days uh, a week uh, to to do the business development or part time representation can be really um, increase your value on ground and and also you know doing a relationship based job involves a lot of back and forth and meetings so we do feel that sometimes having at least two days a week uh, or one day a week uh, can be a good formula and we do it uh, per depending on what you want as Maxi mentioned per uh, specialization so if you need someone that's technical we can find that resource for you uh, we also have a recruitment service uh, but if you want some of our consultants and we have quite a um, multi-tasker uh, sort of team that has a lot of different background and skills um, that goes from financial uh, background with Lucy here um, to marketing and sales. Um, we do really leverage our ecosystem at I chose the whole time because we've been here for 30 years. 
Uh, we know a few people here in the industry, whether it's ranges from an organization like Austrade, Ostmine for mining. We're building quite a tight relationship with them and we've had a, a lot of opportunities coming that way. So having, you know, also leveraging our ecosystem is a benefit we find to, to our clients in that sense. Recruiting is always a big commitment, expensive, especially you know, getting somebody who is so far away, etc. So this incubation system is, is a safe way to go step by step, having somebody maybe two days a week, two days a month, and then increasing because the way hopefully the business will grow to the point of if you have somebody like three weeks a month, it might as well employ this person. So it's a very cautious way, a very economical way to, to test the, the, the market, still do a very effective job and grow as the business grows. So it's, it's, it's a safe solution. Okay, so the, the the next question, I guess you already answered. This is about if you if you also um, support in in hiring uh, uh, people there. So then maybe um, ask a question in a different way. Um, is it difficult uh, to to find, uh, let's say, um, in this case, uh, good engineers in in Australia? Does it take long, or is there a lot of um, People but available. Good, good people always hard to find, but uh, it was uh, no. It's like everywhere. They're very good. Um, you know, Australia is a center of uh, education for 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 a lot of Asians. So they come here to study. So you have very good school, very good university, very good technical uh, college, etc. So of course you find the right people. And at the moment, the, the job market paradoxically is very strong. So yeah, we need to find people. Usually they are they are employed. Um, the unemployment is, is still very it's very low, so of course we can find. And after that, they will say it depends on what you pay, depends on this and that. But of course we can find locally, especially at the moment uh, we cannot import um, resources. You have to find them locally. So yes, yeah, we can find. Um, next and, and question. Sorry, it's Excuse a very me. usually normal time when it's a very uh, uh, technical. Uh, job or something that a person is being sent to the, the head office, like Germany in that case, to be trained a certain time and, and comes back. Uh, at the moment we can't, because well, it's less flexible, but it can be done again by Visio, etc. See, it, it, it's happening and companies manage to find the right people. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, and, and in the other way around, um, and we've seen this with some of our clients at the moment, um, actually at the moment, um, you can have particular business reasons to enter in Australia, um, and, but you would have to do two weeks quarantine. Um, and we do have in our office uh, a visa uh, agent who we worked with a lot. So if there was also the case of um, an employee that needed to come for the company's sake in Australia, uh, there are means to do it as well. Um, the, the next uh, question is regarding the, the, the free trade um, uh, agreement um, between the or, or Australia and the EU. If you, if you um, so to say, have any news or status update uh, when, it, when it's uh, going to, to come and become live? And if this FTA, uh, if something like this is also planned for New Zealand? Uh, FTA works for Australia. Uh, I think it does for New Zealand to be to be double checked, but again, it depends on the industry. But um, the free trade agreement. So a lot of products are uh, come enter the market without paying duties. Yes. Yeah. Okay. okay. It can't be, you have to be specific. It has to be depend on the industry, depend on the product, yeah. some product. But it's, generally, there's no um, um, the, the, the 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 market is free. There's no barrier at the entrance for for any products. Yeah. I know for the video. Usually, the worst of case, you have 5% duties. Uh, that's the, 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 the maximum. So, we consider it a free trade for most of the products. Yeah. No protection. And, and each, each products are quite particular in terms of taxes. So, we have the example of wine, for instance, that goes through the wine equalization tax. Um, that's why we don't have a lot of French wine in Australia. Uh, also, because the competition here is, is massive, uh, you have a lot of Australian and New Zealand wine already. But also because to uh, wine, there's this tax that's applied, and it's not really 
profitable in a way for businesses to come here. So it's it's very, as Maxine said, it's it's particular to every product, um, the, the agreement, the taxing system, and the laws as well. Yeah, that's a good case. If you're in a wine business, better buy a, a winery. I know it sounds easy to say, but uh, there's a lot of winery for sale, uh, and we need capital, very capital intensive. And that's probably the best way to enter the, the market, buy wineries and and, and, uh, and do it locally. Mm -hmm. um, the, the, the next um, is, um, can a local director that is needed for starting a company in Australia also be uh, uh, somebody from New Zealand, like uh, the, the New Zealand uh, nationality? Uh, and maybe staying or being in New Zealand. You, you're saying um, if a business wants to establish an entity in Australia, would this person need could also be a New Zealander uh, citizen? Yes, exactly. Yeah, I, I don't. We, I, I'm happy to double check, but I really don't think so because Australia and New Zealand, as we mentioned in the do's and don'ts, do not like to be uh, mixed up. It's two very different. Actually, one of the an Australian can be director for New Zealand company. Yeah, yeah. it's the opposite. Uh, uh, on but the New Zealander side. cannot be a director yeah. for Australian company. Don't, don't ask yeah. me why. Really yeah, because we have a, a client who actually asked Maxime, a New Zealand client who asked Maxime to be uh, his director for his Australian entities. So because he couldn't, he was only New Zealand. From New Zealand, so yeah, it's yeah. just one, not the other. Yeah. Something happens, somebody must go to jail, right? So that would be me. Mm -hmm. But it's really uh, they, they want a local director as a who to sign. Yeah, it's uh, a legal. It's a legal requirement. There's, there's no way up. But uh, again, any of the company knows somebody, and it's fine. If they don't, we can do this uh, this job well. Um, the, the, the next uh, question is um, regarding the relationship in general between Australia and New Zealand. And then maybe you compare it with, uh, uh, not India, Pakistan, because that's crystal clear, but maybe uh, India, China. So there is a trade between India, China, yes, but uh, it's not really friendship, so to say. No? And there are some uh, yeah, people, may, may at least in India, may go for other products and same, same in China. Um, uh, so, what is the relation between Aus Australia and New Zealand, more, let's say, in general, like competition or... Uh, take it, take it from, from French people. Uh, <laughs> no, they're, 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 they're brothers. They're brothers. They're very, something very strong, which is called ANZAC. ANZAC is uh, when they join forces to fight. Uh, uh, they've been fighting in Vietnam, they've been fighting, so ANZAC is a very strong uh, sevens to unite the, the two countries. So of course a bit of a pickering, like uh, maybe between like France and Belgium, for example. But uh, they're a very close country. They share the same values. They share the same, more or less the same history with uh, with Britain. So uh, I would say this, they're very 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 close. Yeah. And and businesses that come to Australia, they usually see. New Zealand as, as uh, an extension of the business they're doing. Mm -hmm. Although you, you don't want New Zealanders to be, uh, you know, uh, associated with Australia, they're actually, when people do business, um, they always look at both as like a New Zealand being complementary and the other way around. I don't mm -hmm. know if you had a, an experience. Yeah. Yeah, no, I agree. Um, I lived in, in both countries, Australia and New Zealand, and they say we say that we are cousins, actually not brothers, but cousins. Uh, and yeah, most of our, a lot of our clients um, export from New Zealand um, to Australia or the opposite. So no, there's a very good relationship uh, between the two countries, and that's what we see with like uh, Auckland Unlimited. They've asked us to do that uh, the mission of um, attracting investments from Australia, so that really shows that uh, there is a great uh, relationship. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, the last question, at least for the moment, uh, which I have here, is um, you mentioned that um, that it's fast to incorporate a company, but now uh, let's say with with everything uh, like uh, registration and bank account opening and so on could you give more uh, a timeline 
how long it takes? Um, the, 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 long, the longest delay, I would say, is with, uh, with, with the banks, because the banks are not in our control. But I would say in four weeks, everything is done, four or five weeks. Registration oh. is, uh, is, is relatively simple, it has to be done. It's, it's a, uh, there's a process that we're familiar with. Uh, the banks is very much uh, when, they, when, when they want. But uh, we have a very good relationship with two, two banks, which are partners worldwide, it's uh, ANZ and West Bank, because they're part of uh, Credit Agricole and some other large banks in Europe. So we have a privileged access to them. So I would say in four weeks, everything's done. Registration, bank account, everything else. And uh, mm -hmm. of course, the company is registered in, in our office. So you have uh, administrative presence. So that's something we... Uh, okay. Four weeks. Four weeks pass. So then for the moment, I, I don't see uh, any more questions coming in. And um, yeah, if there are more questions, please just drop an email uh, uh, to me and um, then we will see if we if we uh, can reply and contact you yeah that same uh, as i mentioned earlier goes for presentation and and the recording of the of the webinar i want to thank my colleagues from australia and new zealand yeah <laughs> or the other way around how we like it <laughs> but definitely both the countries thank you very much and uh, uh, yeah to I hope Thank that you. everyone liked the webinar. Thank you for the opportunity. Appreciate it. Thank you. Okay. Then I say uh, goodbye and we can now yeah leave the that. leave the webinar and end the webinar. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. bye, -bye.